Hello, I am Wander001, and as you might have guessed from the title of this video, I recently ran into the issue of, well, my computer not starting. So what I'm going to do is show you the steps that I took in diagnosing what the particular problem was uh, with the computer. So to start, I'll start the computer so you can hear and see what I saw and heard when I first ran into my issue. So what you see there is the computer refuses to start and denotes a four beep tone BIOS code as well as it kicks the fan up. Now step one, you're going to want to look up what that BIOS code is. Now the problem is if you don't have a smartphone or another computer to check what the BIOS code stands for, you're going to run into a little bit of trouble. Now in my case, I know that this particular BIOS code is indicating that there is something wrong with my RAM. So what I have to do is turn the computer or close the computer, flip it over and access the RAM in to access the RAM in the back of a laptop. Generally, you're going to have a large panel like this or maybe a smaller panel to just access the RAM. Uh, this is the Dell XPS 17, so I have a single door panel with a single screw. Uh, you're going to want to get yourself some like eyeglass screwdrivers in order to access. Uh, I already took this off, and what you're seeing now is with my particular computer, I have two hard drive spaces, and here are the two RAM sets. Now, what you're going to do is, since it was telling you one of these RAM was not working correctly, uh, so the easiest thing to do is first you take them both out and again your particular computer might vary as to how you do this uh, make sure not to touch any of the connections obviously because uh, what we're going to do is once we take the RAM out we're going to flip the computer over again and try and start it up and make sure that the BIOS code still says that it's a RAM issue as opposed to a possible motherboard issue. All right, so here I've opened the computer back up, flipped it over. I've left the door off because it'll be easier for the next action as well as this action. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn on the computer and listen to the BIOS code. All right, and through my research before, I know that that particular code is indicating that it is still a RAM issue, it is not a motherboard issue. So now we're going to seat individually uh, the RAM sticks to see which RAM stick is giving us the issue. What you'll do next is grab one of your RAM sticks and you will insert it back into the RAM slot ever so gingerly or however your particular computer requires you to slip it back in. Uh, again, the removal and insertion process will be slightly different based on what type of computer you have. After you have the RAM stick inserted, you flip the computer over, open it up again, and start it up. In this case, the particular RAM stick that I grabbed is the functional one as opposed to the non-functional one. But, just to be sure, you'll let this fully boot up make sure that everything is working, check either your system settings or however you want to check to see if the RAM is actually being read correctly. So I know that I have two separate four gigabyte sticks and you're going to double check and make sure that it is reading four gigs. After that, we'll flip the computer back over, check the other RAM stick in the same slot and see if the BIOS code pops up again. I'm just being really lazy here and not using a screen capture, just using the uh, camcorder. Uh, checking in CCleaner, I can see that it is reading the full 4 gig uh, of that particular RAM stick, so I know that this is a good RAM stick. So I powered down the computer, flipped it back over. What we're going to do to make doubly sure is we're going to remove this particular bit of RAM and replace it with the other RAM stick just to make sure that it's actually that particular RAM that's okay and this is the bad one. It just might be the luck of the draw. You might start with a bad one and have to find the good one, but we'll find out in a minute. Okay, just like before, flip the computer over and...
Okay, so we've located our faulty RAM stick. Now, if you wanted to make triply, quadruply sure, you could take the good RAM stick and try it in the other RAM slot just to make sure that there's no issues there as well. I've already done that. I know it's not a particular RAM slot issue. It is just a bad RAM stick. Next step is you are going to have to replace the faulty RAM stick with one that actually works. Now, there's always going to be some information on your RAM stick to give you an idea of what you should be looking for. In my case, I was able to locate an exact OEM copy of this guy here, and I'll be able to replace a single RAM stick. However, if you're unsure of your particular RAM stick, it is always a good idea to buy them in sets. If you've got more than two, if you've got four, you're going to want to buy four. If you've got, like I do, in two, you buy two. If you replace only one and they're not exactly the same, and there's a lot of things that would make it not exactly the same, and this is not a video for that, you could cause more problems than you're fixing. So if you can't find the exact make and model that you have of the RAM stick, get replace all of them. Yes, it might be a little pricey, but it's still gonna be cheaper than buying a whole new computer or taking it to Best Buy. So with that said, uh, we'll replace the missing RAM slot here and show you the results. So here we're looking at the new RAM stick, which we'll install. And after we do that, we'll flip the computer over, leaving the back cover exposed because if this doesn't work, we will have to get a different RAM stick or we will have to replace both the RAM sticks. Uh, again, I'm trying to cheat and got the exact same specs as the currently working an old RAM stick, hoping that I will not have to buy two, as I just need this computer to last me a little longer in one. So, leave the back panel off in case we have to get back in here. We're gonna flip it over, boot it up, and see one, if it turns on without giving us a BIOS beep code, and two, if uh, the computer actually registers that there are, in fact, eight gigs instead of four gigs of RAM now. All right, and here is the initial startup. All right, so no BIOS beeps, which is always a good sign at this point. Uh, I'm going to pause the recording and not make you sit through the actual entire boot up. So, waiting for booting, and it does seem that the computer is hung up on this screen here. I do have mouse control, however, it's not fully booting into Windows. So, we're going to flip it over and take a look at what's going on. Okay, so to save a little time, I did not reset the camera so you could see me uh, fiddling in the back. What I did was I took out the existing good RAM stick just so I can test and make sure that the new RAM stick that I got is actually functioning correctly. So, no BIOS beep, I'm going to sit and let it boot up and we'll find out soon enough if uh, that was the cause. So what happened with that little black screen with it refusing to fully boot into Windows? Uh, that was not necessarily the case of the was not necessarily caused by the RAM itself, I believe, because this computer is on its way out and has given me nothing but trouble since I've gotten it. Um, it was the computer hardware as opposed to the new RAM stick. Uh, all I had to do was take out the new RAM stick, restart the computer in safe mode, shut down the computer, put the new stick back in, restart the computer, and I'm brought to the Windows screen where, you know, it went through its full boot cycle, it logged in, and... Once again, being a little lazy, but you can see there now that the computer is registering 8 gigabytes of RAM. Originally what I had and what I was trying to get back to. Once you're satisfied that the computer actually is registering the new RAM, all that's left for you to do is turn the computer back over, close up the back panel or panels depending on your computer and you're good to go. So hopefully you found this in some way, shape or form helpful. Uh, I figured I would throw together a quick video as this happened to me and thought, hey, maybe I could help somebody else out there who's having similar problems. I do realize that the filming, editing, whatever, it's not gonna be great because I just threw this out there as it was happening to me. So this wasn't something that I set up for. So 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. I have been Wanderer001. Thanks for watching.